Idaho's News Channel 7. This is Viewpoint. Welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. The entire state of Idaho is now well into stage one of the governor's four stage plan to reopen businesses and get the economy rolling again. The whole plan hinges on people continuing to practice social distancing and other protocols to prevent a spike in coronavirus cases. On the same day Governor Little announced the state was moving into stage one, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean outlined the city's plan for reopening city offices and restarting services. It is also a multi stage plan. Stage one is described as a very limited reopening. Under stage one, maintenance and restoration services are increasing for the airport, parks, golf courses, and other facilities. Limited curbit services are reopening, including glass collection sites, household hazardous waste mobile collection sites, and compost pickup sites. Critical public services open in a very limited fashion. Warm Springs Golf Course has partially reopened. The Whitewater Park Wave reopened in full. City of Boise staff will incrementally increase in various departments. And City Council, Planning and Zoning, and other public meetings are being held remotely. Also, no non-essential public events will be allowed unless they are remote and city pools are closed for the summer. My guest today is Boise Mayor Lauren McLean to discuss the city's five stage reopening plan. Mayor, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Nice to see you this way. It's nice to see you too. So what is your goal with stage one? Well, my goal with stage one, I should say the city's goal with stage one is very similar to the governor's and that is to safely begin to get our community back to work. We've done all we could and have had seen great success in ensuring that there wasn't a surge of the virus that the hospitals um, couldn't um, meet the demand of. And so now it's time to slowly reopen our community and get our residents back to work. So how does your plan differ from Governor Little's plan to reopen the state? We're in the same stage and, and we'll look at the same data that the governor is looking at in assessing when to move to stage two and then to stage three. And we have specifics related to how city hall and city government services open and then also require in stage one social distancing measures um, and have some specific rules about the airport who can be in and out of the airport as people are traveling again to make sure that we can keep the slow the spread of the virus slow so that we can get as many people back to work as quickly as possible. Unlike the state plan, the city's plan doesn't have target dates for each stage. Why not? We wanted to be clear that the virus dictates when we move from phase one to phase two or stage one to stage two. And so when the state looks at the data, we'll be looking at the data as well. And if the data tells us that we can advance to phase two and then phase three, we will. But we wanted to be clear that we're looking at the indicators first and the date second. Since the governor's staff and himself are looking at that same data, do you expect the plans to sync up? I do, and we're both in phase one right now. And of course, every city and especially our dense metro city um, have specific health and safety needs that we've had to address here locally that are different than what other communities in the state need. Um, but I fully expect that the phases, unless we see a flare up here in Boise that doesn't exist elsewhere in the state, um, would mirror the governor's phases. Now, does the city's plan have tighter restrictions on which businesses can reopen when? We have not um, called out businesses or groups or others. Instead, we've talked about um, the requirement that you socially distance in fa in phase one at the, at the current time. All right, so um, will you allow things like salons and spas, dine-in restaurants, gyms to open on May 16th as the state plan allows, or is that on an individual business by business basis? Well, I wanna point out again that the state plan says they'll assess the data mm -hmm. um, on or about the 16th. And if the data shows that we can move to phase two, then the state has called out those businesses as being allowed to operate. We will look at the data at the same time. And then if it tells us that we should move to phase two, we'll look at our social distancing order and determine the steps that need to be taken to allow businesses to open in phase two in a safe way to protect the public health. Because what we want to do is allow businesses to open and people to get back to work and not have to take that away if we inadvertently um, create a spike in the virus spread here in the valley. 
Are you keeping a closer eye on any particular type of business or is it you know, blanket fairness and how all, the, how all of them will be assessed? Our, the way that we have addressed phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four is crowd sizes and social distancing measures. In the same way um, that we, after closing bars and restaurants, where we did specifically call out bars and restaurants back in March, after that, rather than call out um, businesses that needed to close, we talked about the measures that needed to be taken if you were to, op to stay open. And that's what we are doing for all of our phases is addressing crowd size, because we know that that um, makes it easier to spread the virus. And then also the safety measures that need to be taken to move forward. Is, because our it, goal in all of this is to make sure that we can open and stay open or at least do everything possible um, to increase the likelihood that that happens so that our economy can recover and our residents who have sacrificed so much can get back to work and have the paychecks they badly need. So is that why you specifically issued a public health order requiring the social distancing of at least six, uh, six feet through May? Yes, um, in talking with, um, even if you look at the state protocols written by the health departments, they recommend it. Um, national health experts say six feet or wearing masks is what will prevent the spread of the disease. And so that is what we are asking our residents to do is to stay vigilant in their distancing, talk with your neighbors, have your in-laws over if you haven't seen them for a while, but keep the distance between two parties. Go to the park, keep the distance between two parties a minimum of six feet. Or if you're gonna be in close contact with people outside of your household, please wear a mask. And those measures will help us ensure that we don't see a surge in the virus and that we can continue to open facilities in our city and get people back to work. That is the most important part of this as we move to recover is that we ensure we don't see a spike in the virus that makes it harder for people to return to work. As far as opening City Hall goes, can people go there, the residents, the citizens of Boise, can they go there for any services at this time? So at this time, we are still providing our services remotely. In future phases, we'll be opening City Hall on a limited basis um, for permits and other things that can only be done in person. We're still asking everyone, if at all possible, to use the digital services that we've created. So again, um, with the goal of maintaining city business, providing essential services, but taking every step we possibly can to ensure we don't see a surge in the virus so that we can all get back to work. City parks are open, but as you've mentioned, you know, people have to practice social distancing. How do you plan to enforce this, especially at places like the popular ponds? The ponds, especially as we move into summer and it's been hot even recently, um, our um, bike patrol is going to be out more and more in, in the parks along the water. We're looking at hiring more um, or repurposing city staff to have a larger patrol on bikes um, that'll be out and about at the parks and along the river, making sure that people are distancing. And because the last thing we wanna do is because we've played so much that we prevent ourselves from being able to work. And that's the most important part of this is that those who are need to get back to work are able to. And so we'll take steps as a city um, to focus first on providing services and, and protecting public health so that the economy can reopen. So could you actually take a step of you know, shutting down the ponds if you see that people aren't cooperating or other facilities? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've said all along that if it gets to a point where it's so bad that we can't control and we see um, data that's telling us that the virus is spreading, that you know, closing of parks in the summer, closing of ponds, if we have to do it, we will, we'd rather not. And we all love those facilities so much. So it's so important that the public cooperate with us and help us out. Are you having any second thoughts about keeping the city's public pools closed this summer? That was a super tough call. My own kids were frustrated that the pools wouldn't be open. They grew up on the swim team at um, Low Pool and then at the Natatorium. Love the pools. This is the thing with the pools is um, the Parks Department presented information that where we looked at the realities of being able to 
um, keep kids separated when you've got young lifeguards just trying to keep kids safe and the budget impacts of getting the pools ready to open um, not being able to allow as many people in and then potentially not being able to open for a full season and across the west our parks department is saying across the west uh, many pools are staying closed um, for many of the same reasons that that we decided at this point to close i've been hopeful that we might be able to hold out um, but it was recommended that we just make the decision um, also from a fiscal perspective it just made the most sense are you concerned about families not having that option for entertainment or for swim lessons um i am you know but i would say a, a minister on a call of faith leaders said la uh was it last week said to me um that he had lived through a war in bosnia and while three months of this feels so long in the grand scheme of things, it's not. So it's so hard because it's this, sh this frustration that we wanna have pools, we wanna have regular summer, we wanna get back to life. Um, this is short term in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't feel like that for us right now. Um, if our goal is first and foremost to protect health, but to get people back to work, then we have to take steps that are smart to ensure that we don't have to close again. And for the next several months and you know, possibly longer while we're waiting for a vaccine, local governments and businesses are going to have to iterate and determine the steps that need to be taken to ensure that our economy can reopen. Because first and foremost, that's what families need is a place to go back to work, to have that paycheck, to be able to afford um, every their basics, um, and then let alone the recreation and play opportunities. The plan slowly allows for larger gatherings in each stage after stage one, from 10 in stage two up to 250 people in stage four, as long as social distancing can be practiced. A lot of people are wondering about big public events in the summer and beyond. Will those be able to happen? It will have to look at it on a case by case basis. And um, many of these things we just it's hard to predict right now whether or not they can happen or whether or not they need to be canceled. And we're looking at the data that everybody's looking at, hopeful that we can progress to phase four, and then we'll have to determine as we're permitting events um, whether or not it's possible to um, ensure social distancing, protect public health and have the event. Um, because as I said, all of these things that are fun, we don't wanna get, have them get in the way of um, our need to get back to work. So, you know, as a city, we're having to balance those two things. And so to get back to status quo, it's going to take a vaccine in your estimation. I think I wouldn't even say it's my estimation. Public health experts around this country, um, leaders around this country are saying um, we are going to it's going to be a touch and go. Um, watch what's happening. Make your decisions, you know, back, up and down um, for a, quite a while. Mayor, we're going to take a time out right here and talk a little bit more about some other issues. Still ahead, has the coronavirus crisis impacted the city budget and therefore the services the city provides you? We'll discuss that. Plus, the search for a new police chief and the plan to plant 100,000 trees. Enjoy a small business feel with the trust of a national brand. Rebath will design your space and install your new bathroom while keeping your family safe. Call 208-391-4888 and save $750 off your tub or shower remodel. Real Steel. Find yours. Save $80 on the self-propelled RMA 460V battery-powered mower set and save an additional $40 when you take advantage of the double battery bundle. Battery power made by steel. Not sold at Lowe's or the Home Depot. Always at a local steel dealer. Here at Weedman Lawn Care, we believe that your lawn should be a place where memories are made, a source of pride, relaxation, and fun for the whole family. That's why we proudly offer a child and pet friendly program so you can enjoy a healthier, greener, weed-free lawn without sacrificing peace of mind. Our program offers effective, targeted weed control and our golf course quality fertilizer creates a beautiful outdoor space. Don't your kids and grandkids deserve a Weed Man lawn? Trust the lawn care experts. Trust Weed Man. <laughs> there are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. 
Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Enjoy a small business feel with the trust of a national brand. Rebath will design your space and install your new bathroom while keeping your family safe. Call 208-391-4888 and save $750 off your tub or shower remodel. And welcome back to Viewpoint. We've been focusing on the city of Boise's multi-stage plan to reopen the city under the cloud of the coronavirus. My guest today is Boise Mayor Lauren McLean. Mayor, has the coronavirus situation and the statewide emergency had an impact on city finances? Um, it has definitely had an impact on city finances because there have been ex um, expenses that we had that we didn't expect. But I am so happy to say that because of the sound fiscal management of our finance team, we've been able to weather the storm, um, look at you know some things that we needed to cut, but most importantly, um, have the funds necessary to provide community services that came up um, as we were shut down and people were getting sick. So unlike the state, this isn't a big loss in tax revenue for you because of, it's not about sales tax, correct? It's, you know what, the 2021 budget, as we're working to build that out, there will be a, a large loss in sales taxes. The state shifted the way sales tax is given to cities and we were going to be hurt in that to begin with. Um, but now we have the double whammy of less sales and so less revenue that'll come to us as a city. And then of course we have lost revenue from um, programs that we had to close from March onward, golf courses, um, rec classes, different camps and activities, all of that impacts our budgets. The CARES Act will provide for reimbursement of expenses that we've incurred re directly related to COVID. However, the revenue that we've lost won't be reimbursed by the federal government. So we're trying and having um, to shift resources around to make sure that we continue to provide essential services and that we can make the investments necessary to recover strongly as we move beyond um, COVID-19 here in Boise. All right, and we'll be keeping a close eye on how all of that unfolds with you as well. Let's move on to other city business. Um, big thing in the news before coronavirus was the search for a new police chief for the city of Boise. Where does that stand? Yes, yeah, so we have two finalists, uh, Ryan Lee from Portland, Oregon, and Joseph Chacon from Austin, Texas. And the interviews ended up being slightly different. The, there were um, group interviews that whittled down the candidates to a series of a uh, pool of four in person before we had to shut down the city. And then I did interviews just like this through Zoom with four finalists. And then we had many community panels that also interviewed the finalists through Zoom. Um, this week, I will have another conversation with each finalist, a longer conversation, and then make a decision on who to hire for Boise's next police chief. So do you have a timeline on that when you wanna definitely have that decision made? Well, I'll be talking with them in the next couple days, and so I really hope that we can do it soon after that. All right. Um, Mayor, I want to end on something that's a, a little lighter. Um, you know, we've been so, so much of the news is so heavy these days. Last month, the city launched the City of Trees Challenge to plant 100,000 trees by 2030. Well, the City of Trees is already famous for its trees. So why do this? So I just have to say thanks to Council President Elaine Clegg. Um, as many of you in Boise know, she's always been committed to ensuring that we remain the city of trees. And in partnership with the Treasure Valley Canopy Network, Elaine has worked to make sure that we have a program to plant trees. And this is not only good for temperature and, and when it's hot to be sure that all neighborhoods have trees planted, um, but it has such a great impact on climate as well. So we do have a goal of planting 100,000 trees. If you've, you're planting trees this spring, um, jump online at the City of Boise and you'll find a place where you can register those trees as part of the 100,000 tree goal. And eventually we'll be um, planting more trees in our nurseries that we'll be able to distribute around the city as well. 
So how will it work? Is it just like you said, people want to join it so they can, you know, they register their tree just to, to let you know? And is there going to be more of a, um, you know, a, an ad campaign kind of roll out to encourage people over the next 10 years? Yes, there will, of course, anybody that plants a tree, we're asking them to register it, but we will have an organized effort at the city level and um, making sure that we provide trees, especially in neighborhoods where there are fewer and um, where it's hotter because there's not a tree canopy and um, where people haven't necessarily had the resources to plant trees themselves. So we will, as a city, be working with the public to ensure that when we plant trees, we're planting them in places that need them and then helping others um, that are planting them themselves take part in the challenge too. It's always so nice to just go sit under a tree, enjoy the shade, especially or in our two, beautiful Or two, and area. then you can have right. a hammock. That's, <laughs> that's, that's true. That is true. I want to thank you for your time today, Mayor, and um, say my best to you and your family and your staff as well. Thank you, and to you and yours as well. All right, thank Thanks. you very much. Take care and be safe. Well, many people have gotten really tired of being cooped up in their homes. One Boise business is helping some of them beat coronavirus cabin fever with some fun beats, socializing while still social distancing ahead on Viewpoint. Healthcare organizations serving this community stand united against the spread of COVID-19. We are working together to meet the public health crisis we all are facing as a nation, a state, and a community. Our dedicated nurses, doctors, and staff are on the front line in the battle against COVID-19. Rest assured that our commitment to you, our community, has never been stronger. We are here for you. To help us help you, we're asking you to take simple but essential steps. First, please stay at home. It is critical in helping reduce the spread of the virus. Second, wash your hands often and stand away from others, at least six feet. Finally, if you begin to feel sick, please call your health care provider first. Before coming to one of our clinics, hospitals, urgent care centers, or screening sites. By, By working, working together and caring for one another, we will be able to face this challenge together. A great childhood. It's easy to talk about, but sometimes a challenge to make a reality as a parent. Breaking the cycle of abuse or neglect starts with a story. A story of resilience, trust, and knowledge. All of Idaho's communities are affected by child abuse. We're here to promote a great childhood for every kid in Idaho. Help us prevent child abuse in Idaho by donating through your Idaho tax return or visit IdahoChildrenStrustFund.org. One Boise business is doing something a little different to help people beat the coronavirus blues. It's providing beats for your block. Maggie O'Mara shows us how. One day, everything is business as usual. And two days later, I'm laying off most of our staff. And that is so difficult. That was a hard day. That was a really hard day for us. Kristen Cole of Soundwave Events was stunned. All the parties, events, and weddings they had lined up were canceled because of COVID-19. Then a light went on in the form of music. One day, my husband Adam, who uh, we run this company together, he came home and he said, hey, I, I have an idea. What if we built a sound system out of the back of my truck and we could take that and do yard parties or block parties for people? We can follow all the social distancing protocols, but still bring some joy and some hope to people. And that was that. We got working on it. That's when Beats for Your Block was born. Yeah, it kind of started from, you know, seeing these birthday parades happening where people are driving past people's houses, honking, waving. And we thought, how can we take that to the next level? Someone contacts us um, and says, hey, yard party, block party, that sounds amazing. Let's do it. And we are playing for about 30 minutes for each um, person or family. Right now, times are tough for so many of us, so there's no official price. Kristen says they're simply accepting donations to keep their DJs afloat. 
we're telling the community that we do not have a set cost for this. We all need the morale boost so much, uh, but if people are willing and able to make a donation, that helps a lot to get some money back into the pockets of our DJs. And so we'll roll up, you know, with the music playing um, right up to their yard and just play some really fun, upbeat music. You know, we're taking requests. So you stay within your families, be six feet apart at least, please. People right now, I think we're feeling the weight of isolation, fear, the uncertainty of what comes next. Cole says during this strange time, a dance block party is just as fun as it is healing. It is so amazing. I mean, I think right away, just how unique the whole experience is just gets people excited. I mean, when in your life have you looked out your window and seen a truck with a DJ in the back with music playing, <laughs> um, you know, go by your house? Never. So then when the music's playing, and you know we come up to someone's house they're just excited and we're seeing families come together in new ways neighbors come together in new ways you know we're playing fun upbeat music and so people are dancing they're yelling like yeah this is so awesome and just having that moment where they can forget all the stress and uncertainty of what we're going through and just just have fun for a minute Beats for Your Block is bringing the Treasure Valley fun and happiness in our new normal in a whole new way. It's been a great opportunity to give back in a way that really helps people right now that's meaningful. All right, from here, let's just bump this party. Seven's Hero. It does kind of make you feel good, doesn't it? And they've done more than 60 block parties since this all began, celebrating life and birthdays and anniversaries. For more information on how to bring this to your neighborhood, go to this story on KTVB.com. That's all our time for this week's Viewpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Doug Petcash. I'll see you on today's morning news and then right back here next weekend for another Viewpoint. Take care.